I feel like somebody's at my door. Like, I feel like I heard somebody like click their thing, like they're locking their door. You know how you hear that little honk? But maybe that was just the neighbor. Uh -huh. We'll see if the dogs freak out. Okay. Um, so good. So guys, this is our, what month are we in? April. This is our April director's meeting. Um, so that's really exciting. We have two um, team leaders here as well. Elaine is, um, Pasilio is here. She now has her five consultants on her team. So her team is working towards promoting this month. And then we also have Ginger Pearl who's on. Ginger has um, added her fourth to her team. Um, so she's got, and one of hers is from Alaska, which is really cool. We have in Alaska, I had a Zoom with her the other day and that was really fun um, too. So we're excited to have them on here as they're gonna be um, growing too. Um, wanted to do, to sort of start off with a quick review for Hannah and Courtney, some of this today is going to be um, based on our organization, like at the beginning, just solely because we have some stuff going on. But I promise we're going to get into some conversation and some brainstorming that will be for all of us. Okay, so don't just hang with us. But I would love to hear your guys, you know, how your guys' mark went and stuff as well. But um, I always love to look at as we keep getting bigger. Um, to look at numbers again. And one of the numbers we keep looking at, I know, is recruiting. Um, and what was really exciting for us in March, and it's fun when the company says, March is like the biggest recruiting month that, you know, we have, that we have. Mm -hmm. And for us to look at our March and to not only did we do more than our record-breaking February, February we had 17 for the organization, mm -hmm. which the following year we had four for the organization. So in one year, February to February went from four to 17. Um, last March in 2016, we had 17. And then we closed this past month up. What did I say? I, I said 21 was the number um, that we did. So we blew away last. Uh, okay, let me just pull it up. I'm going off numbers, I think. We blew away. So that's exciting. I love to see that our trends are going right along with everybody um, else's and for the, um, for the whole organization. But um, I also know, here I'll tell you, yeah, we have 21, so in 17. But what's really cool too is, again, the Beerling organization sales-wise, um, we did the same amount this in March for sales for the organization than we did for December, um, which is pretty exciting. So um, we did over $89,000 in sales for the organization in the month of March. Last March in 2016, we did 62,000. We did like, what is that, like 15,000, 18,000, like so much, you know, almost $20,000 more this month than we did, um, oh, it's actually more, it's more than 20,000, 62,000, yeah. We did like $27,000 more this March than we did last, week, which means you guys had more sales in your paycheck because if the team's doing more, the whole organization, um, is doing more too. Hannah and um, Courtney, did you guys see that as well? Growth recruiting and sales in your organization? I haven't had a lot of growth in recruiting, but it's kind of my own fault. Um, Why is that your own fault? Because I haven't been, I feel like the leader needs to lead and I am not doing much of it. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's not being produced on my team either. Um, I don't know about sales. I can look really quick. Okay, yeah, because it'd be as interesting. Far as, know. You're looking at one year from last year to this year? Yeah. Um, I always go into the prior year comparison. Personal and everybody team. else on the team looked at your own team stats to be able to see that. Jim Hal, have you looked at like, where you guys were last year compared to this year? Uh, yes, not as far as... Um, growth as far as recruiting but sales definitely we're up good yeah my sales are just i like was excited go ahead i was excited to compare march of this year to march of last year because i'm rocking it because i had zero sales for march last year because i wasn't here so this is just awesome 100 percent, like 120 percent right good marcy 
What did you have, Hannah? So one thing I will say as I look at this, like last year in March, we did 21 shows as the total and the sales were 9,000. This year it was 16 shows and it was 10,900. So the average sale of like average show is increasing because we did five less and sold almost $2,000 more. Wow. That's interesting. So that's good. Yeah. Good. So sales averages are going up. How about you, Courtney? Yeah. Hi. Oh, um, hi. Hi. Hi, we added um, three people to the team this month, which is great. So Excellent. This year, last year, there was not a whole lot of yeah. recruiting. So this year's definitely much better in sales. We're way up. So good. It is around 9,000 for a team, which is great. Excellent. Good, good. So you're seeing that growth as well. So that's, uh, so that's exciting. You know, and I think that that's, you know, we, we always want to sort of stick on, I think if we've looked in the past, if I can look at numbers that, you know, we'll get to a point where we sort of study off or we sort of lose that kind of momentum. But um, again, because I think the company gives us everything we need, you know, we, we'll talk about why, what's going on this month for our consultants and for ourselves and um, just some really exciting um, things going on. So for the Veerling organization, I wanted to share a couple things um, with you. Um, what happened in um, March? I had a um, incentive out for you guys. I want to let you know. We started March, and I didn't make this a total um, uh, announcement because I didn't want to because of fear of where we've been in the past, but I think that we've got enough new consultants right now, new directors, just sort of let you guys know where things are. Um, but we did start last month with structure to be an executive team again. Hence why I had given you guys the incentive that when everybody was green, that we that I would give those extra incentive sales and things. Um, and um, business has happened and life happened. Um, we are absolutely in place for structure to bump up and to happen in the month of April. Um, again, to be executive director team, just for um, those of you that are newer, that we need to have eight first line directors, which are directors directly um, on my team, as well as two second line directors. I'm going to show you in a minute where we are. Um, and it's, and I'm, I hear a couple things. And for those of you, again, that have been around Jen and Jen and and that we've done this and, and gone through this before. Um, I think that, and, and Amy and I discussed a little bit actually before the team meeting last Monday, that I wanted to so have new consultants that I think it's important for people not only to realize, and that's part of the fun of this business, that not only do their own sales affect their own paycheck and you know we work with them for the incentive and stuff, but it also that they do have a place amongst a team. That, that that's fun to be able to work as a team. I mean, even Deb, you know, had a struggle at the end of last month, but her team was working together. They were, and that was exciting for them. Um, oh, thank you, six and two, Jen. Thank you for freaking me out. It's not, it's six and two, it's not eight and two. It's eight totals, thank you. Um, so we need six first line and the two second line. Did you say, um, man, like, did they change that? Yeah, <laughs> no, thank God, no. Um, really important for them and I think that it's a good time to incentivize them and, and to sort of let them know and, and to get that sort of team culture. It's kind of great job, I think within each team to not only have our group organization but to be have everybody focusing on we so we talked about our director retreat focusing on your um, on your personal team pages and creating that team and, and what everybody's working for. So um, what I want to show you is, let me show you the chart. I just updated it. Um, and I, again, I hope you guys can see this. But sort of see where we are. I'll show you where we're at. So is it backwards? Horribly backwards? No. Okay. In our first avenue, again, this would be our first line. Right now, we are seeing Canyon, Bowen, Sea Race, Dorsal, and a marking bump up the first line. We have five right now for um, five right now in our first line. Okay, those are our five. We need six. Here's what's really exciting. I've never been in this situation before. Is that we have three potential teams that that I'm looking that will come 
I can't hear you behind the board. What? Like, I can't hear you behind the board. Oh, you can't hear me? There you go. Okay, can you hear me now? And talk around the board. Okay. Oh, good. She's calling out. Okay. First time to be that video show. What? Can't you hear me? Can you hear me now? What the? Okay. So here, can you hear me now? If I, maybe I have to talk over it. Okay. So we have the Jen Ganyan, Colin Royce Corso, and then Marcy Page bumped up to first line. Okay. But again, what's really exciting that we haven't had in the past is that we have the other first line directors ready to promote this month. So we have Elaine. Um, Ginger's working towards that as well. And then Heidi Coffin has come out of hiding and found the join recruiting. Um, and she has just, if she didn't, she has at least her fourth signing this week. Um, and this has been Heidi just saying, I'm going to start asking everybody. Just, you know, hey, you know, you've been great in this virtual. Have you thought about doing this? Um, so Heidi very well could be right there as well. So that definitely, we've got a great chance for us to have that that's there. And then in our second line, you see we have the How team. Um, definite second line is under Marcy is Victoria Reed. Um, and Victoria has signed her fifth. Her fifth has joined her team this past uh, month as well. Um, so they're all lined up to be, so that would be the second line right there. So, April is like the, I mean, it's there. It's just a matter again of us having an incredible, and I'm gonna talk about some things that I'll put in place for that too. But to be exciting, I'm just gonna show you at the bottom, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. So at the bottom, I always put here too, that we have, these are um, people on our teams that have promoted and we know are working towards building their business. So we have Kristen Zuffaletto, um, Josie Barrows, and you know who I don't have on here is um, Ashley, your girl, Brittany, Brittany, Brittany Taitner on. So Ashley has three that are potentially working towards director. Kristen has already said she wants to be fast track. I believe Brittany is on board for to be fast track as well. So we have these other second lines coming up. And then Jen Tagle on Elaine's team is in the business builders, and she's really working towards too. We also have Kristen Carver on the C-Royce team. Who am I missing? Jen, do you have somebody that's working? Oh, Brie Allard. Yes, I'll put Brie Allard on there. She has one right now, right? Yeah, okay. I'll put her on there as well. Um, so, so I hope, does everybody see sort of where this puts us? Exciting. Um, here's the exciting thing and sort of why, um, again, I, I, I have some, you guys know those of you because I'm not because I'll start crying up. You guys know where this puts me and where how this affects my heart and how we've been there before and how I never want to um, stifle you guys again in your businesses to get there and make that the main goal. What really gets me excited though again is that we're seeing growth because with all of these second line growth people that means you guys are growing and that's what I want to have happen. I want you guys to grow. That's where I want it. I did not, for Marcy and I doubt before this could have promoted last month. We had her like $200 away. But we both have, but I don't want it. And I talked to Judy about this. I don't want it to happen organically. It's got to happen organically because it's got to happen where we've got, because we don't want to be where we'll be. Nobody else be scared, you new people that are going, why is Anna crying? Because this is a horrible thing because it's not. Um, and I really, I was thinking about this, um, part of that, um, that chart and what I want to do, and I sort of said this, is I do have an incentive for consultants this month. And so I wanted to go on tonight and do a Facebook Live. That's why I want to make sure that chart is right. Um, but what I was thinking of is how to sort of explain what having it being an executive team means for us. And I was thinking that it's sort of like, so we have going through the whole neighborhood thing. We have a, a house. We have, you know, these different houses. Everybody grows out of the house and stuff. But when we're an executive team, we now sort of have like a party pad, like um, a clubhouse. 
is really what we have. We have this now other building, which is the Party Pad Clubhouse, because when we go to national conference, it'll mean that we can have the suite, that we'll have a place to have team time. If we don't have the suite, we're in a dumb hotel room, and we already have people signing up all over the place to go to conference, we're not going to have a place for us to have a meeting, you know, that we can have a pizza party and stuff like that. It gives us assigned places to sit at national conference for our meals and stuff. We'll be able to have a signed table that we can say, okay, everybody meet at our table. Okay. I mean, so I think that as well as all of the training and that we have that inside kind of thing that we haven't um, had, I think that that was pretty valuable in the last year. So that's how I was sort of, um, going to present that. Does anybody, before I go on, does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Or, and if any of you directors are thinking, nope, don't present it, just leave it, let's not even like go there, like please tell me that too. Like, um, because again, this is this affects you guys, it affects your teams, but I wanna make sure that we're all sort of on board with this and can get excited about this together or it's not worth doing. Anybody have any thoughts or questions about what any of this means? Everybody's scared because I started crying, right? <laughs> <sighs> okay. So should I assume that means everybody's on board? Veerling organization? Jens? What? Jen Ganyan, are you on board? Okay. All right. Page team is in. Okay. So um, here's what here's why i think it's also a great month the sales incentive that they've given us with the ice cream maker i mean is there anybody on your team that doesn't want the ice cream maker for free i mean it's ridiculous so um that is a really great reason why i think right now also having 17 plus 21 38 new consultants added in our organization in the last two months is a huge reason to get on this right now and create some really fun excitement so it's exciting because we've got new people that want to grow their teams too. But again, addressing those people that don't want to grow their teams, that will be done tonight when I do that little uh, thing is that, um, that they will also be, um, you know, to be able to say, if even if they don't want to grow their teams, if they just to be the best consultants they can this month. So that being said, they could just get in and get in on that incentive. What I was going to incentivize them um, tonight as well is to um, every $500 that any consultant on the team submit, every $500 they submit in the month of April, they will, actually, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm gonna back it up for a minute. Okay, here's another little clip in the thing. Um, I leave on Friday for 11 days in Europe. So pray for me. <laughs> we love that things are getting bombed and everything. Matt's like, if you see, you know, he's all freaking out. If you see anything weird, I'm like, that's in God's hands. I'm not, we're just going. And that's what we do. Um, I'm gone. I will have internet. I won't have my computer, um, but I will have internet and we'll be checking in and stuff. So what I thought I would do is the incentive um, is that we will have um, that the incentive will be for every $500 in sales, they submit from the beginning of month. So if they have already started putting in sales, that's great. Until the 24th, until the day that I get back, okay? So every $500 they put in from the first of the month till the 24th, they will get a chance, one chance for every $500 to earn, I've got a, a free one of those wicker sets. What is that called? Wicker entertaining set? Yeah. Well, I can't hear you. Wicker? Rattan? Wicker, wicker Caddy, I think. Wicker Caddy. The whole set with the big thing. I'm mean, going to have the whole thing. All the pieces. I'm gonna, And I'll have a picture. I'm going to have it here so they can, because they, the grill seemed to get everybody excited last month. Um, but here's what I thought was really fun is that with the $500 mark, if you have somebody that hits that $500, they can get a chance into that. But they're only $250 away from earning free coffee mold. You know, or if you tell them they put in or they put twelve fifty in, they're only two fifty away from getting another the trawling and you know, another chance into the trawling, but then they'll also, you know, get the ice cream maker for free. So um but here's the thing is that I really want to push it that it's sort of while I'm away until I get back, 
because wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if I came back on the 24th and we had green director teams already? I mean, that's what I want. And that's what we all want is we want the director teams to be greener sooner. Um, so even for the newer directors, for Ginger and Elaine, and, you know, we talked to Victoria that, you know, those directors, you know, that's a, a great incentive for those consultants because we can get them to be green a lot sooner, hopefully, um, you know, with some substantial sales as well. Okay, any questions on that? Oh, there's a baby, Courtney. We love babies. Okay, I again um, want to incentivize directors that when we are all green, when we are, and this is what I was doing last year, last month with the 100% green, but I'm going to say when we are a paid executive team, my again incentive is. I am, my car allowance, I give the $500 car allowance, that's part of that executive thing, that I will take 100 of it this month and we'll split it up again into 250s and we'll do an extra drawing. So we not only have the eight shows to recruit, which actually course will one again this month, I'm gonna send her $50, but when you put eight shows in and two recruits, you get into a drawing for $50. But when we are paid as that executive team, um, that we've got our eight and two or six and two that everybody's green at the end of the month I'll choose two other directors that are green and um, they'll go in each for another $50 each Okay, are you getting this all Jen on your little notes? So good Is that enough of an incentive? That everybody's gonna be green we'll have a party pad clubhouse Jen how is that enough of an incentive? So, and then again, the $50 thing, that $250, that doesn't have anything to do whether you put, I want you to put eight shows and two recruits in because that should be how you're going to be growing. But let's say you don't put eight shows and two recruits in, but you're a green direct team, you'll go in for one of two of those $50 incentives. So that's the way that you guys can do that. Good? Nobody's talking to me. Everybody's muted because of all their dogs and everything like that. So that's where we are, guys. And that's what um, I'm going to go on tonight and do a Facebook Live on the Veerling organization to um, sort of talk about and do the whole neighborhood thing, sort of let them know where they fall um, within this and how exciting it is of where we are in the company right now. Um, go through the we are one and you know, I'll figure out how many executive teams. I think we have only 55 or so. Um, so that would put as as one of 55 executive teams again in the whole organization, which is really exciting too. Um, but those are you know fun numbers I think for people to see and you know that again it puts us, put us on the map. I did that a few years ago and um, it's exciting. Judy has promised too to have a call with us or something. I don't know what Judy. I don't think that matters as much to people. Maybe it does. Um, does it matter to you guys that Judy said she will come on a call with us on May 1st when we have our first month qualification? Um, and Hannah and Courtney, I'll make sure you're invited too. So, uh, but, so it's just, you know, again, it's just an exciting place for us to be. We've got some great momentum um, and some really good growth as well. Okay, so that's that. So no more crying. Okay, so now I'm going to have you guys sort of come off mute if you want to because we want to have a little bit of conversation there's three conversation pieces that i want to make sure that we talk about um today as a group one of them is um national conference how do we get our people to go to national conference so i want to sort of hear what you guys have done already maybe in your teams anything um but if not what we should be doing now um to really start talking that up because we know that national conference is business and life changing um, that, that would make a, a huge, uh, a huge thing. So what do any of you have any ideas or anything that you've done already to help your teams start talking about national conference? Yes, and Ganya. The only thing I've done so far is um, when they came out with the date, I actually think I might have started it back in August. I went through um, CentShare and I programmed a post for every paycheck. Um, and I had put up this thing for um, I was willing to do like a savings program for them if they wanted to mail me a check every time they did their paycheck. So it was like a constant reminder all year about conference. Not one single person has taken me up on it. Um, but 
at least it's in front of them. Mm -hmm. I think what's really going to make a difference, because I saw it happening yesterday on the Veerling page, is once people start signing up and posting that they're going, I think that's going to, just mm -hmm. that same thing when you recruit, you've got that momentum going. So mm -hmm. I think once people start, as long as we make sure, we make sh sure to have them post and be excited, I think that will help like push others over the edge. And I think that that $99 um, thing is totally game. That's a game changer. I have people gift. going. Yeah. I agree, Jen. So what, I'm going to let Hannah, do you have to, have you done something already? Yeah, the $99 thing because my newest um, recruit is, she's like, she was a past consultant anyway, so she's been to conference, but she's like, it's $99. Why wouldn't I go? You're going, right? We're going. And I'm just like, we're going. We're getting more people to go. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that awesome huge good who because what can we do with that 99 dollar thing i haven't done so much with it but i've got ideas of what i think i'm going to do with it but it's time like again i think that we've got some good momentum going on the organization page what <clears throat> something to add ashley me yes no no i actually i can't go i do i photograph mm -hmm. weddings all, all summer so um i'm not going yeah but um, I would love to get like Kristen and Brittany and those that are really motivated to grow their businesses and have been recruiting. So anything you guys have, I'll definitely post on my group page. Yeah. <clears throat> Marcy, you talked some with your group, have you? I did. I did that on my one-on-ones for March mm -hmm. and I reminded everybody that $99, you can't beat that. I'm, my whole team is brand new. So my whole team is $99. Mm -hmm. or awesome. each you know of course and I'm the only one and I only missed it by 11 days to not be $99 so um we're, we're planning to uh Victoria and I to drive up to Chicago because it's close enough for us so we're going to caravan and have fun and it's only five hours and double up and bunk up so everybody shares and just make it as affordable and as fun as we can. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, you know what I'm no. thinking, what I'm thinking, I love the personal kind of thing. And that's what I might, and I'm just, and I'm sort of bringing, because my thought was to make a personal message to all of the new consultants saying something along this but i'm thinking because there has been comments and conversation it was ginger and krista and all them on and gwendy just sort of jumped on too she's one of shannon's um about it on the organization page that it might be a great thing for all of us to go to and write a personal message saying hey did you see the conversation on the organization page about national conference did you know that you fall into that new consultant category where it's only $99 to register? Do you want to talk some more about this? You know, or is this something that you want more information on? You know, or something like just to really do that personal kind of thing. But again, you can relate it really well with that, um, with what's going on, you know, the conversation there. And actually, Maybe it would be great, Anna, for... Go ahead. Maybe... Maybe it would be great for those people that have been before to maybe post why it's so awesome. Like mm -hmm. um, Nicole and I were just there for the Elevate Your Success. And one of the things I love to see was the history and to see, um, you know, the distribution center, you know, the warehouse part and, and to meet Tracy and mm -hmm. just... It was, it was just a super cool experience that I want all of our teams to do. So maybe if we said why it's great to go, um, me, of course, what, it's not at the same place. But. What if I start, and you know what, this could be Courtney and, um, uh, who's on Bob? Anna. We're getting, <laughs> That you guys could even do this on your page, but I'm thinking, what if right now, I was just thinking about this, I put a thing on there on Veerling Organization and just say, um, uh, if you've attended national conference before, what is your favorite part or 
story. And just that on and then we can get, because that would be some more conversation then that we'd be able to follow up with. Does that make sense? I think it's great. Because then if we can get people posting it, because they're freaks about it. They'll, if you ask anybody about it, they're going to tell you more mm -hmm. about it. But that way, again, then we can get that conversation going. That'll be better for us to follow up with our, um, you know, with everybody. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, since I've never been to national conference, I'm assuming it's a, it, it's a lot of fun. I'm assuming it's very exciting. I'm assuming there's a lot of information. Um, however, with all those questions that you just posted, um, I'd like to know how it affects people's businesses. Like they were, they had this plan before they went and then after because of, because of whatever they learned or got, got from it, this is how it affected their business. This is how it impacted their business. So Jen Gannion, you comment, you're the one I always think about because you comment on that post that I just did, how it affected your business the first time you went. I know that there are um, statistics that show how it changes businesses and stuff there, and I don't know where those are. I don't know, Jen, if you have, or Hannah, you have access to those? Yeah, they usually, well, it might be on a national conference page or somewhere. It seems as though they start sending like emails and things from the home office that have those stats. I feel like it's probably on the national conference like page. It on probably it. is. Yeah. But Jen will show that she did X amount of shows or what her income was or whatever mm -hmm. on the months leading up to national conference. She went to national conference and how it just changed crazy um, right after that, you know, just so she can, but that would be a great thing, Jen, to post. Because, it, would, I mean, it really is a lot of money, not just the ticket, but the travel, the time, mm -hmm. and and everything else. Yeah, so it's like, an investment. If I've never been, I don't know how to convince someone else to go, other than yeah. to say, oh, it'll be really fun. Yeah. But I don't know that I want to spend that much money just for a fun time. Right, right, right. I think I'd rather go to the beach or something. <laughs> I'll be honest. I never would have. Tr I never would have had a focus of earning like excellence or any sort of sort of top sales like that if I hadn't watched people walk across the stage getting recognition for that at conference. The first couple of times we were all like, "Oh, we're I, we have to do that. Like we want to walk across the stage like that." And I, and I would really like to have that part, all of that in that conversation that um, you posted just now on in um yeah. organization, so I can um, suggest for for my people to. Mm -hmm. Go. I, I can't say what what it's going to do for your business. Right. Like know what's done for their business, you know, and and have them go there. Okay. Yep. Thank good. That's good for right. us. Yeah. Jen, how did you have something to add? Um. Yeah. I was going to add um, trips. When you see the number of people that earn trips within the company, because most people think of um, the only people that earn trips are directors and above because we work more. But I mean, there's, there's tons of people that walk across the stage that earn the first level and it's just mind boggling the amount of people that earn a trip. Mm -hmm. So it just seems more attainable when you actually see the amount of people that earn it. Yeah. Cause in our organization, it's like, you know, a handful of people that earn the trip. Yeah. But when you see the hundreds and hundreds of people that walk across the stage, it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more now that all our directors are doing eight shows a month and two. And just a little FYI, just in case nobody knows this, that um, Jen Howe is like this close to earning her very first excellence award. In I'm, I'm like 4,000 away. Oh, <laughs> I've never earned excellence before. And it's after actually last conference, um, it, it was a goal of mine. So. Yay. Probably gonna earn it this month, so a month early. That's awesome! So exciting! So exciting! Because this is the good. This is the good month too, because we get to pick out of the Tiffany, the good year. Yeah. Marcy, did you? Hey, Anna, I wonder yeah. if I wonder if you could also post from the business side of it. Like, this is an investment in our business, and we can do mileage and our hotel and our food and those are all business expenses mm -hmm. that we could use towards our taxes as well yeah yeah that's good and that can be something that we sort of keep in involved let's sort of keep how watch how that thread goes 
um, you know, and then we can just sort of keep adding in there too. But yeah, that's a great point because that's something that we, you know, as we're talking to each of our people too, you know, that they've got questions and stuff to remind them that the entire thing is a tax write-off. You know, it's a, you know, yeah. we go out to eat, we might have a glass of wine, you know, not Courtney, but you know. <laughs> So I think this is the best time to get on that again and if you're talking to people there is the option of driving there is the option of flying there are people doing both um, I know ginger had a concern and so that conversation was going about where we stay and whatever once housing opens it hasn't opened yet has it no so once that opens you know we all make sure you know we that everybody's got rooms and we're you know rooming together with people and um, stuff like that so nobody gets left out <laughs> I think the doc saved our room already. I think she, I think it's open. Well, she, Dot may have been able to get in as an executive. I hope it's not too late to get one of the freaking suites then. I know, well, I know a lot of people. Um, Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I know a lot of people were getting hotels close to it. Like I had a friend that was doing that. I don't know that it was necessarily open, but they just picked a place they wanted to stay and started searching for Room. Oh, okay. So not necessarily getting, I don't know, but I haven't seen anything. Yeah. So not necessarily getting hotel, you know, like the housing rates and okay. stuff. Okay. It says April 17th on the, on the conference site. Oh. Reservations for housing will begin April 17th so okay. for the conference hotels. So that's pretty soon. Okay. Um, but I know Dot doesn't usually get sweets, though. That's not what she hasn't done that for a lot of years to do that either. So I don't think she always stays at the conference hotel either. No. Okay. Where's she staying, Courtney? Oh. Um, I don't know if she said something about, I want to say like the crown. Is that like, is that a place? No. I don't know. I have no idea. No, you're probably staying out by the airport or something. <laughs> Motel six. <Yeah. laughs> okay. All right. So national conference is something that we can be working on, and again, that's just starting some conversation. You know, as we're talking. Mm -hmm. Bookings. Can we talk about briefly about? Um, I've seen some talks um, out and about in the on the field that it's been tough getting bookings this month. Da, 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 da. So I would love to hear what you're doing to get your bookings. Um, but also some ideas maybe that you have for your consultants um, in helping them get booking. Because if we've got consultants coming and, and having questions or struggling, what can we do to help them? Bueller? Yes, Thanks, Ashley. Um, my biggest thing that when people come to me with bookings is you need to actually start thinking and personalizing your messages to people if you're reaching out and doing like cold messages. Mm -hmm. uh, that totally changes and not everyone wants free products. Some people just want to play games on the virtual party. Some people just want to have fun get togethers with friends. Mm -hmm. And um, so getting everyone to kind of focus off of, you know, I can get you free products from Pamper Chat, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what everyone wants mm -hmm. um, as as much as you might think in that well it's a motivator for me it's not a motivator for everyone else some people just like to get together um so that's what i've been trying to have them think about i've been having a lot of the recruits i have think about um think of somebody if you see that they're moving or they're moving into a new house or they of course engaged all those different milestones in your life um, and then also reach out to my mom loved her pamper chef party because she has pamper chef products that are 20 years old and she's excited to see the new ones. So think about, don't just, a lot of people in my group are in their twenties, so they're just focused on them, but I'm trying to get them to think beyond like, you know, beyond their peer group. Basically. Yeah. That's a yeah. great idea. You know, it's that whole thing about people book parties for food, family, free, yeah. food, friends, free. What is that? Fun. fun fun food fun free friends so you've got those four different reasons why so that's a great thing to stop and say okay i'm going to message this person what about those four things do i think is really important to them that would you know make it personal for them? i agree ashley that's huge deb and i were just talking about that this morning um but i've talked with some um 
consultants about newer consultants, same kind of thing. Like it totally changed. They went from having no bookings to me giving them that script of, you know, I thought of you because, and all of a sudden they've got tons of bookings on there. So, so that's huge. So good. Thanks, Ashley. Jen, did you have something? Jen, how? Yeah, hold on. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I am muted. Uh, I'm okay. muted. So okay. I've been doing, um, and I, I did this training um, back at the retreat, I think, but I've been doing the now and later bags mm -hmm. where I have a bag of products and they're inexpensive products. Most of them are five and under, um, but they get to pick a product if they pick whatever month I'm looking for. And I usually only book the current month and the, and the following. So for April or May, if they pick a date, they pick a date, they get to take one of those products with them that night. And then I have a later bag, which has a number of products that I used for that evening. And then that product would get added onto their order the night that the party's held. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you and it's key products. It's like, um, like the garlic press, the salad choppers, um, the batter bowl. What else am I using? Veggie wedger, quick slice, things like that, like higher ticket items that people get really excited about. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just add it to their order. And if they don't use a half price item, I use it as a half price item, or at least it's going to be at least a 20% discount. Mm -hmm. And I, and last, that, it's and working. I, yeah. yeah. I got, um, last week I got three bookings on my Friday night party. Wow. Yeah. Two for May, one for June, but I still gave the June, the now and later pick. Mm hmm yeah, people like to leave with something free, you know, that kind of. And, a and I'll tell you, since I've, I've been doing that for for a good solid six months, and my mm -hmm. booking, uh, my um, cancellation rate is very low. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Thank you. Different than yeah. that dice game. Where were we just recently? And they were talking about that dice game again. And I was thinking, oh, God, don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't even, no. Don't even do that, I think. That thing, wasn't it that we went to in New Hampshire, that training? In Vermont? Ginger? Deb? Remember we went to the thing in Vermont? And I think somebody there was talking about doing that dice game. And if you gamble, you know, and it was like, oh, they never, we know. Those never hold. It's a focus on food, making a personal food fun, friends. Um, but the now and later bags doing something. So good ideas to give some consultants. Anything else? I mean, the stoneware thing. I mean, we, again, if we've got consultants that have been around for a while to go. Um, hi, Terry. Welcome to our meeting. Um, but that we have, um, you know, the people, if we've got consultants that have been around for a while to run those reports, you know, and again, the whole idea of adding to their collection. This is months to add to your collection, to be able to run the reports of who has ordered before you know has ordered stones and have started that to add that's another good thing too okay anybody else have anything to add about bookings for april because we know they want them they want the ice cream maker for free they love this whole thing with the chances and stuff so we'll um we'll do that um the other thing i wanted to do was i wanted to have ashley dorso who's left her post. Here, she, <laughs> Ashley had show, told me, and I actually just did it with five new consultants this past week. Um, and I can add at the end how I sort of had the, a couple little things sort of added into it as well. But um, Ashley, again, brand new director, a lot of um, new consultants. They are um, all pretty young. Um, which is another um, fun thing about it too. But what about, a, she was sharing with me the other day, we were on a new consultant call, Ashley, or so we're about Fast Track, which yeah. this is interesting. Kristen wants Fast Track, so Ashley and me and Kristen had a Zoom because Ashley wants to know, you know, they were talking about maybe Anna can give us a system to get the Fast Track. What's the, we want to know, like, what's the end of Fast Track? I said, eight shows a month. That's what, that's it, eight shows a month. That's your first. That's the thing. Eight shows a month. Eight shows a month. So, um, you know, she already has recruiting on the brain. She does eight shows a month. She's going to be a fast track director. Like, that's it. So, um, so just to keep that sort of in mind. But we were talking about, Ashley was talking about her new girl, Brittany um, Tainter, who we will, you guys will see on here soon enough, I think. Um, 
but she is uh, was talking about her launch party that she had done. And I'm going to have Ashley go through and talk about the launch party that she did for Brittany um, and the setup and how she actually had it done because I thought it was quite genius. Because I said to Ashley, I go, where'd you learn that? And Ashley goes, I just made it up. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, you're genius. So I did it. I just did it with five of my consultants. I can sort of share with my results as well. Ashley, can you tell us what you did with me? Hi. Um, so I was um, running for a few consultants um, talking about doing a launch party. And I've had people who wanted to do bookings, like three of them, wanted to do, book with me and do shows. And then as they're like continuing to think about it, I'm still talking about signing on. And then it got to the point that they signed on before I even got to do their show. So I lost their show and I said, Brittany, here's what we can do. I'll run the show like I normally would for you, but we're going to focus on getting bookings through your show. You know, so, cause she was so new, but she just wanted to get going like from the get go. Didn't really have any experience of how to run the party. Wanted to just take right off. So what I did, and I have a page, um, a group actually that's called Pamper Jeff with Ashley Dorso. So it's my business page where at the end of each virtual show of mine, I direct people to go like my page so that they can get the most updated um, discounts and whatever the special is of the month. So I've quite the following on there. But I was trying to figure out how I create that sort of page for my new consultants so that they can consistently reach out. Um, some people just don't. I have another business page, so I have a lot of experience of like posting and keeping active with it. But I wasn't sure how to set that up for my new consultants without kind of like pressuring them to add all their friends in and then get, annoy the crap out of their friends. So what I did was I created a group like I normally would for Brittany to do her launch party and it ended up just like a virtual show like my other one, but I strategically had, um, oh. hi. Oh, Eleni, it's the, <laughs> that's her. <right>. No. <laughs> Um, I strategically have posts that are aimed at and games that are aimed at getting people to book through their party. So like the very first post, I, I'll send the outline. I'll post the outline for you guys too. But <clears throat> and it doesn't really matter what the rest of your virtual party looks like. Just as long as you have these posts on these days that um, it will get the word out and um, help them grow their business and get bookings. And what it resulted in for Brittany was was it 10 or 11 booking, 10 or 11 shows. Yep, so she has her first month completely full with eight shows. She's filling up, I'm pretty sure she's almost already full for May as well now because she's already been running her own shows. Um, but it kind of teaches the new consultant how to run a virtual party, what kind of questions I'm asking in there. And it, I keep pushing her, I'm guiding her through the whole thing and she's filling up her schedule. Now, one thing that Kristen, which Kristen is under me, but she had, uh, I can't pronounce her name. Alzira, Alzira, I think. Yeah. So she did the same thing. I sent her this outline and she's running it for her. But what we can't, we had such a hard time getting through to Alzira, however you say her name, was that she's like, I'm not getting the sales. I'm not getting the sales. I've got all these bookings, but my, my launch party isn't reaching, you know, a thousand dollars like I want it to. And we had to kiss like, keep explaining to her. The purpose of this is not sales, although it's going to be awesome that you're going to get these sales. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have them set it up under like their boyfriend's email, a second email they have so that they get the host rewards and the commission. Mm -hmm. But she was so focused on trying to get the sales that I think she was missing the complete point that we weren't focused on sales. The focus of this launch party is strictly bookings. We want to fill your first month. We want to fill your second month so that you can keep going with the sales and you're going to hit that 30 day goal. No freaking problem. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Let me tell you, and I love it because I mean, a lot of us are probably thinking, you know, like, okay, well, I've done like launch or I do them the same kind of thing. But here's a couple differences I'll tell you that Ashley did. Because this is where I think not only do her posts, when you see the posts, they're very fun. She did it on a group. She does her parties on a group. So, you know, we talk about this and I just had a new consultant that had started her own business page. But am I right, Ginger, I know you're at the doctor's office. I'm hoping you can answer this. If somebody just likes my business page, this is why the difference between pages and groups. 
if they like my business page and I post something on a business page, so if I create a whole other page, and it may come up in their news feed, but it's not necessarily going to come up on their notifications if I post. Mm -hmm. But what I think is happens is that if you create a group, a business group, you know, so if you make a group, so like mine is Anna's VIP PC lounge or something is a group that people I can add people or they can request to join and I can add them. If they're part of that group and I put a special or I type a game or something like that, they then will get a notification of it, not just it coming up in their news feed. That's correct. Okay. Yes. So that that's what you want to do. That's what so here's what Ashley does. She has the group called Jen's um, Jen's Pampered Chef Launch Party. That's what the group is. And so it runs for the seven days. But now at the end of the group, at the end of the seven days of the launch party, all these people are in there, including a couple posts that say, hey, let's help Jen expand her business. Add people that you know love Pampered Chef or love to cook to the group and tag them below and you'll get extra chances into the thing. So Ashley had said, Brittany started with like 80 people on her, in her group. Well, by the time the group was over, she had like 150 because other people were adding people to the group. And so she actually showed yeah. off of people that she didn't even know. Yeah. She because now all of a sudden you've got other people in here that love. So at the end of the seven days that I just had my new consultants go in and they changed the name of their group. Now the name of their group is called Jen's um, Jen's VIP Pampered Chef Group or Pampered Chef with Brittany Painter. Now they have not only added to their bookings, but now they have a um, business group all ready to go that they can put their specials and all their things in. The different posts that I thought were fabulous were those posts that Ashley's pocket that we were talking about that it had people adding people and incentivizing them to add people to their group. It mm -hmm. also had them the bookings. It talked about tag, add and tag any brides that you know, because we have a registry now. I know mm -hmm. Brittany had now all of a sudden has got a registry set up too, which is another thing. Um, mm -hmm. Fundraising. There was something in there about fundraising as well. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Ashley? Yeah, they're keep, it was like, um, I set it up. So like every... Um, send me like a sol like a solid contact for somebody who you know needs a fundraiser, and Brittany will send you a um, season's best um, recipe book in the mail. Just for doing that, yeah. And she already got five in her kit, so it was pure yeah, incentive. Yeah, so she already had those. So it really like it just I, again. Then that's sort of and that's I'm helping Ashley because you since you're newer too, like the thing. Made those are the kind of things that really made it different. You know, Carrie and I talked about this a little bit when it when I had heard about it too, but that's where it's sort of come. So I've got these five. I can tell you some of my um I've had some of mine were really getting a lot of response and people were really interactive and stuff. Some of them not so much. Um, but what I did do with some of them is I gave them that personalized script. Hey, how about you? If people aren't tagging, you know, and saying they'll be one of these first eight to have a show and stuff, but why don't you take anybody that you know, take 10 people that are participating, you know, that you see doing messages or liking things and personally message them and say, hey, Susie, thanks so much for being a part of my launch and for supporting me, da, 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 da. Um, I am so excited about this business and I thought of you because, well, you know, you love to cook, you whatever. I told him that, you know, would you, how about being, I would love for you to be one of my first practice parties. So I had some of these consultants, these new consultants go off and they're like, oh my gosh, I have six shows. Oh, and I also gave them, because if they were doing cooking shows and catalog, I gave them, they, when they come back and say, I'm too busy or my driveway's a mud pit right now, I can't have a cooking show. Here's what to say back to them about doing a virtual party. And so even though they might not have had the people like Brittany did tagging in those posts, she was coming out of it with six, seven virtual parties you know, all ready to go and, and set up that way. So, but again, each one of them now has a business page already started with people on it, knowing to go there for Pampered Chef specials. Mm -hmm. And um, what was I shoot? What was I just going to say? Brittany was really good about this. 
and she posted on her own. She started posting mm -hmm. on her own as I was doing my sin share post. She would post and say, okay, I have five bookings. I'm this much closer to my goal. She would, and I saw Katie start doing that too in her mm -hmm. launch. Yeah. You know, so they get more comfortable with it and they start doing their own post. Mm -hmm. And actually, I don't know if you knew this and I'm sure, um, Ginger does that it's better for them to post in the group than me because they, they, they're going to get more views than I would. Yeah. So, and um, it's amazing when you see the numbers because that was happening with mine is if I had my new consultant post, you know, in groups, you can see how many people like they like 20 might be seeing mine, but 55 were seeing theirs. You know, like there's so when they post that notification, I think comes up so much better. So having them post, having them tag in there then you know it's sort of like you said it gets them right into that um that whole it's, it's just like host coaching but consulting coaching yes yeah Something. and you and ashley did come up with a really great evernote which sort of outlines exactly what to do and how to do it so you'll post that add that link that you gave me right in the um group. Oh, will you yes. post it in the direct page yep does anybody have any questions or thoughts for Ashley? Yes, Terry, you're muted. You have to unmute. Ah, oh, there you go, sorry. Um, okay, so my question, I love this, by the way, Ashley, um, two snaps for you. <laughs> um, I'm super excited. Um, I always do everything in events, and when Anne and I were talking about this, I'm like, okay, I might be willing to try the group thing, because I think it's fabulous. But while you were talking, um, I was thinking, we have a lot of, new we do have a lot of new consultants but what about those consultants who are have not done virtual parties yet or are stagnant because i can't wait to see your outline but what is your thought on helping those people who haven't done virtual parties who already have a group so we're not going to create a new group for them through that but would your would your outline work for current consultants that are kind of like flatline so it's basically like a business relaunch is what I would call it. So I did this and then I had Kristen who signed on with me last month and she goes, Hey, why didn't you do this for me? I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't think of it before then, but let's do it now. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, we're going to set it up. We're going to like make the big announcement. She already had her business page already set up. I said, we're just going to use that same page. I'm going to kind of take over, make me an admin. And then when we're done, you can put it back to whatever you want. But I took over and she ended up filling up her schedule just because it was consistent posting with a focus of bookings for that week. She, and she knew, she's like, I'm not so worried about the sales. I just want bookings. And if this can help me get there and get the word out, then that's awesome. And I love that you said that because I have a girl I'm doing, um, a new cons or a party, but in a, in an uh, event. And she said, eh, it's not going so great. I'm not getting any sales, but I saw that two people were interested in doing bookings. And so I love the fact. So now when she comes to the team meeting tonight, I'm like, Hey, listen, you know, it's okay because we are, we are always, we are sales focused so many times and it's hard to you know, think, oh my God, you're only getting bookings. I always look at if I have a low show and I get bookings, I consider them do-overs. Mm -hmm. So well, the way I look at it, especially during the launch party, people are seeing all the incentives, um, host incentives, and they're thinking like, yes, I'm going to add my friends in, but if they see, oh, Sherry's going to do a party with her next month, I'll just wait and get something at Sherry's party. You know, Sherry just added all her friends to her launch group to Kristen's launch group, but nobody's ordering because they're waiting for Sherry's party to come up next month. And that's what I said, you've got to realize these people are going to support their friend who they see is going to book a party with you. It's not that they don't want to support you. It's just, you're going to get their sales next month. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make that point to especially, oh, I still can't see your name, Alzira. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just start calling her Al. Hey, what's yeah. up, Al? <laughs> and it's, that's the, you don't even say the Z. That's the thing. I don't know how to say it. It's a silent Z. Oh, it is? Yes. She tried to explain it to me and I'm sitting there like, okay. Yeah, no. I'm going to have to go online and like do the enunciation um, yes. thing. All right. But, but yes, that's exactly what I did with Kristen. Okay, great. Good, 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 good. All right. Anybody have any other thoughts or questions about that I think it'll be fun when you see the her Evernote that you can actually have it, you know, set up and stuff. But it really is um, 
there, there was, in my Evernote, there was three things I focused on with the number one being booking. One second, let me pull it up for myself. And I outline it so that you can understand you can develop these posts in the future for yourself. You don't have to do what I do every time. It's number one, get book, bookings. Number two, build the Facebook business page. And number three, get the sales. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I have it color coded and everything. What each post is like the objective for each post mm -hmm. so that you can kind of take off from there and start building your own. And then As you a, just sort of add in, because you said, you know, you have those big important ones. You want to put them either in the morning or in the evening. And then, you know, then you fill it with the regular product fluff, you know, kind of those kind of posts in the middle of the day. Um, but then Ashley also has a great thing at the end, which sort of is the consult, like posts to give to the consultant ideas to put on for themselves too so those are all on there as well yes and to help them boost sales at the end um the i say the first thing in the morning of the like la the day before the last day i say have them post the mix mix chalk game i don't know if you've seen that mm -hmm. but basically it's promoting them because they're all freaking out because they don't have a qualifying show usually is what's been happening but so this gets everyone to you know, mix, mix, mix. And then the consultant can jump in and say chalk when she gets sales and then start the game over. And then the last person who just said mix before she said chalk gets 20 additional tickets. So, uh, that's been kind of so you're doing, so you don't put the chop until she gets a sale in. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that's how that game went. I thought you just had to throw chop when you felt like it. No, it says, okay, I love this game. Every time a person places an order, I will say chop. The last person that says mix before I say chop will get the 20 raffle tickets for the big drawing. Let's keep those orders coming. And then you put the link to the order. So but like I said, I have them post it because they have more people will be able to see it than her. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's, I will post the link right now. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Good. I thought you guys would love that because I was like, what? when she was talking about this. So, um, but again, it's just an easy way that you can. And, and I'm telling you, my consultants loved, I was getting a lot of like, thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you so much for helping me with this. Thank you. So, you know what I mean? Like it was just being able to keep feeding them on this page. Um, they were really excited about it. So good. Thank you, Ashley Dorso. You're welcome. Okay, so I want to finish off our call. We're about, you know, I know we go to about an hour and a half, but I wanted to, it's, it's a, for us to just spend one time a month together, this is sort of fun. So what about um, Marcy, so everybody, and Ginger, I know this is probably newer to you, but we've been working through our 15 invaluable laws of growth, right, as everybody, and um, here's what I would like to, because this is what my thought is, is that, and again, I posted something, nobody answered me, um, but one of the things, and I'm gonna have Marcy go through and she's gonna talk about this and stuff, but one of the things that again, hit me right from the beginning of this book is that it really, again, takes our focus away from what we think is going to give us success. You know, we say, okay, we wanna grow our business or we wanna become a director, or we wanna do, you know, whatever it is that we wanna do um, or an advanced or to grow, that we we look at this and we think um what well, you know I, I think about like oh we've got to make the plans and we've got to do this and we've got to recruit and we've got to do this but again what he's saying is that you really need to grow like you've got to have the growth you've got to grow to be kind of successful so one of the thing and i just found because i had to do something on the daily vitamin a quote that he said that is um that if uh, to grow, what is the quote? To grow, you need to have something. To grow, it's something about that. It, you're not growing unless it's out of your comfort zone. Like you, it, to grow, you got to. It's it's going to make you uncomfortable. So, what are the kind of things as you're starting to read this? And then, Marcy, you could. Is this one of your questions, Marcy? You were going to have. Um, and, um, I'm not, I don't want to steal your thunder, but what kind of things that you guys have been reading this the last couple months and start working through this, have you started doing to grow? Because some of us have been around for quite a while and we're nice and comfortable in what we're doing right now. But 
to grow is what's going to actually and do we, you know, finding those things that push us out of our comfort zone to grow is actually what's going to help us to continue to be better. So what kind of things are you guys doing that are growing you? Nobody's growing. Nobody's doing anything. <laughs> Well, I, I did respond to your post. You did? I didn't see it. I'm sorry. What is it? It was, I am um, focusing on positive self-talk. Perfect. And how are you doing that? Um, <laughs> very slow, very difficultly because I'm in, a, I'm in a really rough place emotionally right now. Mm -hmm. um, and actually reading through this was very painful. Growing pains is very painful. Mm -hmm. um, so I, when I find myself in that negative self-talk, I just, I recognize it more quickly and I don't stay there. Mm -hmm. And then I start um, changing the sentences and the, and the phrases that are in my head. Mm -hmm. So I don't have things posted on, on my, well, actually I do. I have right in front of my computer here, I have, um, the card that you sent me, success comes from seeing life. In unending process of trying, learning, and growing, I have that to remind me that, you know, I am successful. I just, so anyhow, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm focusing on is a positive self-talk because the negative is so strong right now. I really need to beat it up. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's growth. You know, it's something different that you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, or thinking or how you're related. And I think, again, that's, Something that if you're doing it like daily, that's the thing. I mean, this kind of, the growth is going to happen with stuff that we do on a daily basis that might, again, be different than what we're regularly doing. I mean, Deb, it's not just daily. It's literally like maybe minute to minute, two, two to three times an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's whenever that comes up, mm -hmm. I focus on what I can say positively to myself. Mm -hmm. And so important because that can, that can affect everything attitude and stuff. Deb put that she's focusing on things that she can control, not that she can't. And what would that be, Deb? You know, you can't just throw something out like that. So what, what things specifically? I can only control my effort. I can't control people's response to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I can also control my response to other people's stuff. But mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I mean, I can't control what other people are going to say about me or mm -hmm. what have you. I can only control my response to it. That's one thing. But the other one is I can only control my effort. I can't control how people are going to respond or whether they're going to respond to that. Now, I, that said, I can talk with people who have been in the business longer than I have and get some ideas, right, Anna? Yes. Of things that I might change or the way that I might say something to maybe help that income a little, help that outcome a little bit, basically. Yeah. But I'm with you, Elaine. I'm, I have been doing an awful lot of self growth in the last year or so, and it's at times very, very painful. But once you, once you start to get past some of that, it's so worth it. So worth it. Hang in there. What about some of the kid, for directors that are on here that have been here for a long time? Because it's very easy to stop and just be comfortable and just to sort of float right through. And then, of course, then we just, we don't, we don't see any growth. If we're not taking action to sort of promote that growth, what kind of things, what kind of things are you doing or can you do or you think you want to start doing to sort of create your growth? Yes, Terry. I think sometimes, you know, when I have a month like I had last month, the next month following, it's like you've talked to me before. It's like I'm on a high and then I'm down here. And it's about more about trying to keep things even and balanced. And um, I need to go back to writing my top three things that I want to get accomplished for. I have four categories. I do like a little four square on a piece of paper. One is for me personally, because if we're not healthy for ourselves, 
We can't be healthy for anybody else, whether it's our business, our team, or our family. Um, the next thing is, what do I want to get done in my home? Um, because I feel like when the kitchen is dirty and I'm, my business isn't where I want it to be, the kitchen's always clean uh, because I'm, I'm focusing my attention on something that I can control or I feel like I can control. So my house is always clean when my business isn't where I want it to be. Now the house has been a disaster and it's been okay. <laughs> um, the other thing is I write down something for my business because we can't neglect our own business when we have teams. And then I write down something I'm doing for my team. And this is a daily activity and I don't have any to show you right now. Um, but I only write down three things for each one because I think as women, we take on the role as superheroes. Like we can do everything because if you have a spouse in your life or family members in your life that do not help or contribute to the things that they could help take off your to-do list, you feel like, well, they're not going to do it or they're not going to do it right. So I might as well just do it myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I write down three things. That's it. And it makes me feel accomplished. And if three is too much for you, then write down two. But when you start feeling like you're accomplishing things and you're getting things done versus feeling like we're spinning all the time, because I think that's sometimes where we feel when our businesses isn't where we want it to be and we're not growing, is because we're spinning. And when we spin or we're focused on the negative, um, it, it's hard to get out of that. So write down the things that you know you can accomplish, make them small, and then each week grow them, talking about the growth. So maybe this week it's one thing for each category. Um, per day, your top important thing. Um, and if taking a shower has to be on what you do for your personal self because you don't get in the shower sometimes until three o'clock on a meeting day and then you're running around like a crazy lady, maybe shower needs to be number one on your goal list. Please <laughs> like, put that on your number one on your goal list. <laughs> well, I always take a shower, but sometimes it's the last minute and I'm running around and then it makes me stressful. So it's instead of working in the quadrant of important and urgent put it to where we're we're doing it before it's stressing us out mm -hmm. and that will also help us grow because then our minds are calm mm -hmm. and when our minds are calm it's easier to focus on the things that will make us go forward instead of always reacting to everything mm -hmm. no i totally get that good anybody else have something that they're doing to grow Jen Gannon, you're not doing anything to grow. Ashley, you have something? I can jump in. I'll be honest. I didn't read this and I should have because I didn't have power, but <laughs> um, uh, something I've done to grow because I run this Pamper Chef business and I also run my own photography business last year. I, in addition to that, I worked a full-time corporate job. So it was been crazy in the year I had last year was basically zero time for myself and for my husband or for my family. I went to none of my sister's basketball games. I didn't spend time with my husband at all. I had a hard time just taking the dog for a walk. It was like, I can't take the 20 minutes to do it because I need to be getting, sending this email, going to the post office, to drop this off or, you know, whatever. I was just tied to my computer working all the time or my cell phone. Um, something that I found myself focusing on this year is with my schedule like I literally have my whole entire year planned out because I do weddings every weekend but I've made myself say no <laughs> I've told myself to say like stop committing to things even though as much as I want to do things for other people I need to learn to say no because my husband's more important than doing one more wedding and making that much more money mm -hmm. that month because it really doesn't matter I, so I scheduled myself a weekend for myself each month and if the way it works out, if our weekend ends up being um, Thursday, Friday, because that's just the way it is, um, that's, that's totally changed my entire life. Of course, I dropped my corporate job, so that helped a lot too, but that just meant I focused. I, that just gave me more time to focus on Paper Chef and um, Silver Bell Photography, so, but I still try to just give myself yeah. time. That's Good. the biggest Thing. That's a big growth thing. Yeah. And you know what? And what I think you find too, when you do that is you're probably getting a lot more done and everything mm -hmm. you're doing is a lot more effective too. So. And I'm able to like completely check myself out. Like a lot of last year I was constantly on my cell phone 
in the car rides, no matter what we were doing, I was like multi, multi, multitasking mm -hmm. everything I was doing, answering emails, answering the phone, doing a pampered chef sale, and then doing a photo shoot, staying yeah. up until 2 a.m. each morning and waking up at 6 a.m. It was insane. But um, yeah, now it's, I've, I've learned, especially with SinShare, that was mm -hmm. just amazing. I would try, and I'm trying to get a few of my other consultants to do that too. Natalie and Josie just don't believe me what a life changer no. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. Good. Good, good. All right. Well, let's do this. Marcy, I know I cut into your time. Do you want to go through those couple chapters then and sort of lead us to talk a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. then, again, I think that any, all of us that are reading this can say that, you know, it is impactful. And I think again, that like Ashley said, it impacts every part of our life, I think too. So. Well, how about if I, Keep it, keep it abbreviated and so we don't go too far over our time, but I think there's some, some really important things to take away in both of these chapters. Yeah. So the first one is the, the law of the mirror. You must see the value in yourself to add value to yourself. So I think it would be a good exercise to give yourself a score from one to 10, 10 being you're the most amazing rock star that you know and one is you don't know who you are so i think it's a good exercise to decide where you are on the on the spectrum of seeing value in yourself mm -hmm. so just take a second don't tell me your number just write it down and be honest with yourself because what's the point if you're not honest with yourself and then um I, I want to give you a, a couple of phrases that uh, I've learned along the way. So um, we were talking, somebody was talking a little bit about uh, talking nice to yourself. And I heard a, a sentence a long time ago that said, don't say anything to yourself that you wouldn't say out loud to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you would say, let's say if somebody you knew did something not very well, you might say, well, I know that you can learn and let, let me coach you. And I think this will be better if you do it this way, or how about if you consider it that way? But we would say to ourselves, you are the stupidest thing. You're as dumb as a box of rocks. And you would say these ugly things to yourself that you would never, ever, ever say to anybody else. So it's a good reminder to talk nicely to yourself. If you're growing, you're going to see yourself in three different stages. You're going to see yourself before you happen, as you're happening, and after you have happened. And if, if you're a parent, you so know this story. So sometimes you, you know, you're in the middle of this tirade and you're like, oh my gosh, I am so not nice. And you, you're seeing yourself as you're happening. And then maybe you can do a course correction, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can see yourself after you've happened and you're like, that was so not kind. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. That was so ugly. But the best case scenario is to see yourself before you happen. And so, um, you know, you give yourself grace in that you're going to see yourself in each of those different stages along the way. And I wanted to remind you, if you guys haven't seen this little video, it's called uh, Jessica's Affirmation. It's that little curly haired girl that hops up on her bathroom vanity and is like, I love my house. I love my sister. I love my clothes. I love my hair. I love my everything. And it totally went viral. I don't know. I'm making it up 10 years ago. And it was, it was so awesome. And it made me smile. It made me laugh. But I think when we look in the mirror as adult women, that isn't what we say to ourselves. We're like, oh, gray hair, eyebrows need to get done, get your hair done, lose some weight. We, we say these things like put on, put on your makeup, paint the barn, whatever it is that you say to yourself in the mirror. Those are, I'm just being real. Those are some of the things I've said to myself. And it certainly doesn't launch us into our day in, a, in the right perspective. So there's, there's, there's a way that you can 
you don't want to lie to yourself. I, I don't think I'm Lauren McCall. I don't think, you know, but you want to say, wow, I, I feel good about myself today. I look nice. My hair's done. You know, I've painted the barn and it doesn't look so bad. And if you speak to yourself, that's, it's going to be how you reflect who you are to your customers, to, to the lady at the grocery store. And I think those are all very important too. So um, the story of Janetta McSwain um, really pulling herself out of the muck and mire and making something of her life is, is something, it's a great story. And I know lots of people that have done that. And maybe even some of you have pulled yourself up out of the yuck of your life and have done something really amazing. So what if you wrote your story? What would your story look like? I know I could, I could do a little bit of a story like this. I married a man who was physically abusive that broke my jaw, broke my arm. I became a single parent at 19 and divorced and had to start life over. And I could write a story that's not too far different from this except for some things. And if you write your story and you say, this is who I was and this is who I am, this is amazing. You are amazing just as you are. So it's not a bad idea to um, start a journal and rewrite your story. Put your score of your self-esteem of who you think you are and see how that changes. Maybe, maybe you think you're a three or a four or a five today and maybe in July you might notice that you're a six or a seven and you've really improved in, in thinking nice things about yourself. So um, I won't read you the whole story, of course, but I think the uh, steps to build your self-image, there's steps one through ten. Um, one of the things that he speaks about, he says, and this is a quote, by the time you're 17 years old, you have heard, no, you can't, an average of 150,000 times. You've heard, yes, you can, about 5,000 times. That's 30 no's for every yes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, um, that's really powerful. So I wish I'd have heard that, you know, 30 years ago when I started parenting, because I'm sure I said, no, you can't, a gabillion times. And... I don't, I don't want to be that person. I, don't, I want to say, yes, you can. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I think you can do that. Go for it. And I think, um, actually, that's one of the things that Tammy Usher was really good about when she was talking to me about joining Pampered Chef. I was like, I have never sold a thing in my life. I wouldn't know the first thing from Adam's House Cat on how to do that. And she's like, I believe in you. I think you can do it. And that just having somebody believe in you is powerful, very powerful. So, um, and then of course, when you don't do it as best as how you thought, or if you make a mistake, tell yourself that you're paying the price for growth and, and that you'll learn to do it better next time. Be, not, be kind to yourself. Okay, so I won't read you all of the 10 things because uh, there's not all that much time. But one of the, applying the law in the mirror to your life, one of the things he suggests is to make a list of all your best personal qualities. And I thought that would be really hard. So I came up with about five right off the bat that I thought, okay, I have a good sense of humor. I'm kind, I'm loving. What well, these are, these are nice things that I could come up. I, I got to about five and then I was like, okay, so now I'm nauseating myself. And I thought, what would my best friend say? And so he suggests, okay, don't stop until you've written 100 positive things about yourself. Now, that, that could be a little exaggerating, but if you asked your best friend, if you asked your team, if you asked Anna, if you asked your husband, your kids, what would, if everybody said 10 nice things about you, you would have 100. So, I think it's a good exercise, especially if you struggle with self-esteem. I agree. Number two, um, number two was, are you aware of how you talk to yourself? And if you find yourself in this mantra of 
talking negative to yourself or even not even self bashing like I'm ugly, I'm dumb, I'm not smart, whatever. But if even if you don't, if you say, um, I don't think I can do that. Well, that's not even nice to yourself. You know, of course, there's some things that you probably shouldn't do. Go, don't, don't, maybe don't go skydiving without a parachute. That's not a good idea. Be, be wise about this. But <laughs> it's probably not a good idea. But, um, but if you talk negatively to to yourself about yourself, or some people even say that things like that's just the way I am. Well, the reverse of that is I'm not willing to change or I am not willing to be teachable, or I don't want to be humble enough to position myself to be teachable, so I'm not willing to learn. And even that's not a pretty thing to say. Um, so write down, if you find yourself, if you catch yourself saying something ugly, write it down so that you can rewrite that sentence. Sometimes we have these tapes that we play in our head that just play the same thing over and over again, and you have to rewrite that tape. So the last thing he says is to uh, create kind of a a vision statement um, that says, this is who I want to be. And maybe you need to stick that on the bathroom mirror and say that, you know, say something like, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to be amazing today. I'm going to keep a smile on my face. I'm going to think the best of others first. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do these things because those things are not lovely. So I think if you haven't, if you haven't read this chapter, I think it's a super incredible investment in your time to be able to do that. So make time to do that. So that's chapter three. Anna, do I have time to do a quick drive-by on Chapter 4, too? I think a quick one. I know we're already a little bit past 1230. I know, because I went. But, yeah, if you want to do a quick one, yeah. Or okay, do, you want, so do, you want, do you want to pick? This is a pretty long one. Do you want to pick this one up next month, then? I wouldn't mind to do that. Because it sounds like, because Ashley didn't even read the last one. Oh, so, Terry didn't either. So, Girls. Hannah, nobody's reading the book. It's two freaking little chapters. I'm taking mine to Europe. Why don't I'm we ready. hold it? Everybody right. needs to read that one. Please. Ashley, I didn't want you to be left out, so I called myself out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, hey, girls, maybe, maybe this would be helpful. So I did two things. And, okay, I might be a little bit of an overperformer. That's probably one of my flaws. And... I want to be a teacher's pet. I'm just confessing the truth. I want to be the best at being me. And so I bought the book and then I bought the audio book so that I could have it in the car. And I've probably listened to this chapter seven times only because, well, first because I was teaching and I wanted to be sure I understood what I was talking about, but I have it in the car so I can just press play and play it again and play it again, especially on the difficult ones, like the self-esteem one. Mm. So What's again, it's a, again, it's a, it's a business expense to mm. purchase mm. these things and add it to your tax file because I'm investing in myself and you're investing in you. So and maybe we should have a little post of, did you read it accountability before we have a call? <laughs> Well, I love it. But you know what, I think that too, and you know, I remember thinking when I was a newer director and stuff, when a lot of these like trainings, you know, and stuff, and I'd be like, oh, my God, one more thing I've got to do. But like, being around for a while, uh, I think that um, I think it is so invaluable to really stop and look at these and take time with these, because it, this kind of thing, this self-development, because it it, otherwise, again, we just, you just sit in the same place forever, you know, and, and when these kind of things can affect the rest of your, you know, the rest of your world and stuff, not just our business, but um, it really is a great time to have this kind of a small group to, to be able to go through with it, it with too. So I love the idea of having both the, the uh, audio as well as the real book. You just have the audio, Terry, stop getting all worked up because I know you don't have the actual book. 
because you don't read. Okay. Okay. No, the other I, thing I think that if was you... great though, because I think having both, because yeah. when I'm listening in the car, I'm like, oh, that was good. God, I need to write that down. And if I had the book, I could highlight. Right. The audio part, when I went back and read, that's why I was like, I need to get the book. So thank you for sharing that. You're so welcome. The other thing you can do if you haven't purchased the book and that's not, maybe it's not in your budget to make that investment. If you Google um, this John Maxwell 15 Invaluable blah, 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 blah. It has, there's a PDF link that you could download to your iPhone or iMac or iPad or whatever it is that you're using. And then you can, you can highlight electronically if that's your gig, then you can do it that way too. Good idea. Okay. Good, thank you, Marcy, for doing that. So we will pick it up then on chapter four then next week, because you guys I know have put in quite a bit of time with us, but I appreciate, you know, again, I'd love to be sitting around having real coffee with you guys. And, um, but I hope that um, just to get the brainstorming, just to sort of get together and sort of mind meld with other leaders um, on our team. So again, we've got some exciting things going on for this month. Um, one of the things that, again, that I'll be doing that live thing later on for the Veerling organization, but one of the things too, and I was thinking about you, Jen, Canyon, especially, but what I want to talk about is the vision for our organization, but I will also be reflecting that every team on here, every director team has their own vision as well and their own goals. And so, because I do want to make sure that you have those right front and foremost with your team as well as to what your team goals are and what your what your team focus is and you know where you see your specific team, whether it be to promote to advanced or to senior or to, to continue to develop directors on your personal team. I would expect that you guys would would do that as well as we'll we'll share the um, the organization goals that and that vision that's going to be sort of that neighborhood. So so, okay, anybody have any last thoughts, questions? We can go eat lunch now. Thank you all. I appreciate all of you. Um, and I'm excited about what's going to happen this month. So goals, so just keep April 24th in your head. But that's, that's going to be the month or the day that I'm going to sort of, again, put out that we're going to get try to get people to be, you know, to be shooting for that $500 to, to have some activity and stuff so that they can get the, the chances in for the drawing for the, what is it called? The Wicker Entertaining Set? Is that what it's called? Entertaining Set. Wicker Entertaining Set. Um, but so that we'll have all of that together. That's going to be, uh, so that, again, we can really get some some action and, and things motivated by the end early, early in the month would be a good thing. So there's the wicker serving caddy and the wicker serving tray. Yeah, the whole thing. What's the whole thing? Wicker entertaining wicker set. Serveware. Wicker serveware. Wicker serveware set. The whole thing. Can you buy the whole thing all together or oh. no? Oh. No, that's why I was confused. There's wicker serveware, and then there's two pieces you can buy. The wicker serving caddy, yeah. and then the wicker serving tray. All right. Well, I'm going to give the whole thing away. Well, make your own name up for that. All right. I will. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day.